Hey guys, Spina Dude here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Jurassic Park Amber Collection Dilophosaurus. Alright guys, I am so excited. This is my most hyped figure from Mattel ever. And it finally is in hand. Surprisingly efficiently, I was expecting this one to be delayed actually because of all the current events in the world, but I got mine from Entertainment Earth. I pre-ordered it about a month ago, about three weeks to a month ago, and it's already here. So exciting. This is a Dilophosaurus and quite a, an array of accessories that it comes with as well. You guys have already seen the packaging, absolutely gorgeous packaging with the Amber Collection. On the back here, there's a little write-up on the Dilophosaurus with a lovely picture of it there in the Amber encasing. You can pause the video if you want to read that, but we've already seen the packaging in the Velociraptor review, which we've reviewed pretty recently on the channel. So now, let's focus on what we get here. First of all, we have the base. And Mattel hasn't changed the bases here, which is unfortunate. Same old base, really lame and just kind of cheap looking. Like I said in my Velociraptor review, would have been awesome if it had that obsidian black color with the translucent yellowish orange amber color kind of crackling through it. I think that would be awesome with like a fiery yellow Jurassic logo on the front. But anyway, I mean, you still have a base that comes with it, which... You can't really complain if it doesn't stand up, but still, it's it just doesn't compare to the quality of the actual figure. And before we jump into the Dilophosaurus, we have a really cool East Dock sign here. Now this was actually two parts. You click the sign into this muddy base here, and I mean, that is just, that's fantastic as an inclusion with the Dilophosaurus. Plus you have Dennis Nedry on the market as well. I do not have that one. I'm only interested in getting the dinosaurs at the moment. But, come on, the East Dock sign, absolute classic. And they've even included a loose spinning sign on it. I love how they made the joint here really loose as well, so you can just spin it like this. They could have easily just made it so it would hold its position when you turn it, if you know what I mean. But that just shows how dedicated they are to making this film accurate. And East Dock sign, I mean, what else is there to say? It's absolutely wonderful. Now on to the main event, the main star here. The Dilophosaurus. Oh, and I know guys, this isn't a accurate Dilophosaurus in any way, shape, or form, but as a Jurassic fan, and for all you Jurassic fans watching, this is pretty much the perfect Dilophosaurus figure that we've ever gotten in the franchise as far as figurines go. This is amazing. Mattel, you have completely outdone yourself with this one. I thought the Velociraptor was excellent, but this one just completely blows it out of the water in my opinion. It is... Wonderful. Now before we get into like actual sculptural detail and everything, let's talk about the articulation. What do we have to do with this one? First of all, let's start down here. We have the tail joint. You can move it around like so. Bendy wire tail just like the raptor so you can move the tail and it will hold various poses. I like mine with just a slight flick on the end so I hold that. The legs have the pivot joint in the hips which isn't as effective as some other Mattel figures but it is still very helpful for balancing this one so you can pivot those in and out. The knees can move forward and back and twist, as well as the ankles and at the feet as well. The feet are not as dramatically oversized as in the Velociraptor. They're still a tad bit large, but they're barely noticeable in my opinion from most angles. If you look at it from the side, it does look a little bit weird there, but really not as bad as the Velociraptor. The arms pretty much have the same articulation as the Raptor. You can move them forward and back. They have the pivot joint at the shoulder. Same down here, you can twist them at the wrist and at the elbow. And if you didn't want the hands pronated, you can turn them inwards. Of course, I like mine to be film accurate, so I keep the hands pronated. And then the head has wonderful articulation as well. We have a ball joint at the base of the neck here, so it moves like so. And then we have a joint at the base of the head, so you can move the head up and down like so. And then of course, the jaw is articulated, both the upper and the lower jaws. And the head is made out of a slightly rubbery material. And the pr probably the reason why is so it's a little bit more flexible for when you're tugging on it. And why would we be tugging on the head, you're probably asking. And that is because if you don't want your Dilophosaurus frilled, which, by the way, the frill looks absolutely gorgeous there. The paint and the pattern is amazing, like spot-on perfection. That's incredible. But if you don't want the frill, then there is an option for that. You just pull the Dilophosaurus's head right off. It's on a ball joint there, remove the frill, and it comes with an extra piece with a folded frill that you can put 
right on the neck like so, and just pop the head right back on. Ta-da! Look at that. I mean, that is just, that's fantastic. It looks great. It does look a little bit weird when you stretch the neck out like so, and that's just kind of dangling there instead of pressed up against the neck, but it's easily fixed if you just push the head back like so. I mean, come on, that is, <laughs> that is great. And this is the first Mattel Dilophosaurus figure with a proper removable frill, if I'm not mistaken. And I've actually never tried this, but let's, let's give it a shot. What if you just pop the head in without anything? Oh, you do get a, a bigger range of motion, that's for sure, but it does look a little bit weird. There's some gappiness in there. Anyway, let's pop the folded frill in there for the rest of the review, just so the big frill is not in the way. Anyway, the coloration here is pretty much spot on. The patterning is phenomenal. I love the slight little white border against the really dark foresty green bits against the green color on the skin. You have a light a little airbrush of a creamy color on the underbelly there. The eye is in a piercing yellow color, as you can see right there. The interior of the mouth is sculpted and painted in a fleshy pink color. Same with the Raptor though, it is a little bit more saturated in there than I probably would have liked, but it doesn't look too bad. And the teeth are a little bit chunky, but they are actually much better than the Raptors. The teeth are much smaller on this one, of course, and this whole figure is actually substantially smaller. We'll do a comparison in a little bit here. I will say this arm on mine is pretty loose, so I can see that maybe not being able to hold its pose in the future, but I'm just being very careful with it. Same with the joint at the base of the tail here, but who knows? I might get another one of these to have. I'm serious, guys. I love these so much. I might get another one and hope that it has some tighter joints. Once again, beautiful sculpted detail throughout, as you can see there. You can tell just a lot of love and care went into properly depicting the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus here in figure form. And I also really like the slight hint of the orange color on the folded frill there as well. And of course, we mentioned briefly earlier the frill. The actual extended frill has amazing paint, and this is actually very rubbery, which is something I was slightly worried about because if it was a solid thin plastic, then it might not be as stable. So I'm very happy at how soft this is, so it's a little bit more pliable, especially when you're swapping out the pieces. Now my biggest complaint with the sculpt is actually the placement and the size of the hole where the peg goes for the base. It's just kind of an eyesore when you pose this one in more of an upright standing position. It actually really is an eyesore and that is a shame. I might try to fill that with like an epoxy putty or something and just brush over that with a, a creamy color. It would be better than just having a gaping hole in the stomach like so. But yeah, I mean that pretty much covers everything. Oh, there is one more thing I have to show. Of course, how could I forget this? <laughs> It comes with the spit piece. And the overall sculpt for the spit piece here is very similar to the first Dilophosaurus from Mattel's regular range. But I don't leave the spit piece in its mouth because it's not the right color. It should be a black inky color. It would have been really cool if they did like a solid shiny black with maybe some hints of like an iridescent purple or blue in there to kind of give it like a a really inky kind of shiny feel to it because this is just like a straight clear green plastic and it looks kind of cheap and too toyish in comparison to the rest of the sculpt so I just leave mine like this I think it looks very well intimidating like that but anyway guys that is pretty much everything that this Dilophosaurus has to offer Mattel my hats off to you this is an incredible collectible for Jurassic Park fans and this is something I've been waiting for for ages, and it is just an absolute dream come true. This is just an amazing collectible, that's all I can say. I do recommend being sparing with how often you swap out the frill and the, the folded frill and the extended frill. I can see the joint getting quite loose over time, and maybe wearing down from popping it in and out, so I'm gonna leave mine like this. But yeah, in case you're wondering how large this Dilophosaurus is, and just its average length, because you can get it into various poses. On average, it's about 10 inches long, which is about 24 centimeters in terms of like a standard height here. We're looking at about six inches, which is about 15 centimeters. And for a quick comparison, 
I am going to bring out the Amber Collection Velociraptor, which we just recently reviewed. Let's scoot these over here. These two are actually in scale, pretty much, based on the film. And having these next to each other, they make an absolutely gorgeous pair. Here, let me lift the raptor up a little bit. There we go. These two make an absolutely beautiful pairing on the shelf. I have mine pretty much just like this with the East Dock sign behind them. But having the Dilophosaurus being so borderline perfect sculpt-wise in comparison to the film, it just brings out the issues with the Velociraptor even more, and I would be so down for having a remastered version of the Velociraptor, with smaller feet and an updated head sculpt to be more accurate to the Jurassic Park version. I would be so down for that. But as it is right now, these two are just phenomenal Jurassic Park collectibles, and I can't recommend both of them enough, but especially the Dilophosaurus. I mean, you just get an epic collectible for JP fans there, with an iconic prop from the film, the East Dock sign, plus a folded frill, a base, and the Venom spit, and an awesome collector's box even. So, I can't recommend the Dilophosaurus enough. But anyway guys, that is going to do it for this review on the Mattel Jurassic Park Amber Collection Dilophosaurus. I'll put links down below to where you can get one for yourself guys. Get them while you can, I have a feeling this is going to be one that's going to sell out pretty quickly because this is amazing. Mattel's best figure to date in my opinion. Thank you so much for watching guys, let me know what you think of this one down below. Leave a like if you liked and I'll see you guys in my next video. So take care and bye bye.